Hello there folks, this is Jeff from Practically Tactical and in this video uh, I'm going to be talking about a very special project gun, one of two in a matched set. And note that we are going to be firing this so there's going to be live fire uh, in the video, okay? So stay tuned. But uh, I have a matched set, or I have a couple of my late mentor uh, Paul Gomez's guns and uh, things that we had traded you know, each other for, and, and this is one of them. I have a 1911 as well, which is uh, modeled after the Chuck Taylor Combat Master, which I'm carrying right there, appendix. I hope that safety's on. And, um, <laughs> cocked and locked, uh, anyway. So, um, and the other one is this uh, lever action 3030. So, basically the gun was just a hunting rifle, you know. Um, I had traded Gomez for it years and years and years ago, and then, uh, but it was waiting in storage, a whole bunch of things transpired, finally got it. So, once I got it, um, I decided to have it redone. And this is a collaboration project between Overwatch Precision, which is one of our sponsors, uh, Midwest Industries, the maker of the rail, and Hollow Sun, okay? So, some of the features of the rifle, when it came to me, it had, you know, most of these, like, older lever action hunting rifles and stuff like that. The hunter that was using it just took uh, some lacquer to the wood, lacquer the hell out of it, and just to keep it from, you know, having more of a seal uh, against the elements and stuff. So, both the forend and the stock itself were, like, really ugly, lacquered, and kind of beaten up and stuff like that. The forend actually had a, a big enough chip in where it interfaced with the, the front um, hook thing that I just, I just was like discarded it. So I immediately stripped the wood and there's a bunch of pictures that we'll hopefully montage in here of the before and after. And so what I did was I, in addition to the wood being really ugly, there was both a crack in the wood behind the tang, and there was also a crack in the wood uh, where there's the two little things enter the back of the receiver uh, before the wood kind of beefs out into the grip. And that is actually a really bad thing uh, because as you fire it, it'll get deeper and wider and wider and wider, and it's bad. So uh, fortunately, John Robinson, when I was uh, my gunsmithing mentor, when I was with him, that was one of the things that he taught me was woodworking and also how to repair cracks and stocks, uh, so we'll put in a picture there of how I did that. But uh, yeah, so I, I repaired that with wood glue um, and then went to town on the stock. Uh, I stripped it with zip strip, which is awesome stuff. If you're trying to strip uh, wood, then I highly recommend zip strip. Um, it's, it's just great stuff and it comes off with water actually, so that's good. And then stained it uh, with uh, leather stain, uh, which it's uh, a saddle thing. I'll, I'll put it in the description box. And then started with the tongue oil. And basically, tongue oil, what happens when it gets into wood, it kind of changes the chemistry. I don't know, I'm not a chemist. But it makes it harder and much more impervious to the elements in, in general. So, but it hardens the wood as well. So that's, that's really cool about it. So I, I put 12 coats of, of tongue oil on it, and now it's really hard and impervious to the, to the weather conditions that I may be using the rifle in. Um, starting kind of at the front and at the top with the sights, I have uh, excess. Uh, front sight and excess ghost ring rear. Uh, this does require drilling and tapping, so take it to a uh, qualified gunsmith to do, because um, that's kind of a tricky little thing if you're trying to do it yourself. And then the excess scout mount, um, a Midwest Industries M-Lock rail. So I was kind of, not concerned, but I was like, how is this gonna look with old meets new? And I think it turned out really, really beautiful. And the rail up here, the Midwest Industries rail, allows you ample, I mean, if you're attaching lasers to a lever gun, then you are a little weird, but uh, yeah, for, for a light. So I can now mount a light in any kind of position or whatever other things, uh, sling swivels to any conceivable position, etc. cetera. Um, and I, I, I really like this, it's very lightweight as well. And additionally, if I'm doing like cool guy shooting stuff and have my arm all the way out front like this, then you know I can get closer to the muzzle and stabilize it while I'm firing it. And now moving on to the rail, this is an excess sights uh, forward uh, scout rail for, for the Marlin lever guns. And um, just note that I had, to, I had to modify this in order to get it to work with the Midwest Industries rail because the back air portions of the scope mount itself kind of went pretty low. Um, so basically I took it to one of those belt sanders and just went ew, ew, until it fit. And then I obviously had this refinished, but I'll talk about the refinishing here in a moment. Then I, let's talk about the sight. So this is a Hollow Sun 503GU Elite. And I, I'll tell you, I really like Hollow Sun. So I wanna shout out to my friend at Hollow Sun for uh, sending me another one of their units. Uh, I've been beating these up for over two years. 
uh, running them in classes, uh, teaching with them, beating them up. And I'll tell you, man, they're really, really nice. I, I, I can't believe I'm saying that about an optic that's less than $500, but the truth is they're really nice. The dot is really crisp. The glass is perfectly fine. Um, I like a lot of the features. I'm going to do a dedicated video about hollow sun optics because uh, I've really come to like them. I don't think that there's anything wrong. And a lot of people think, like, I need to spend a lot of money on an optic. Uh, some people can't, though. And you know what? On my bedside guns, I have hollow suns. You know, that, that's part of the, it, the testing process became me really liking the sight. If, does that make sense? So, but you can't answer because you're in the internet world. Um, but anyway, so one of the cool features about this, which I really like, is that, first of all, it's got a 50,000 hour battery life, um, or 20,000 hours with the, the circle dot reticle, and it has a motion sensor. So once I like set it up, you know, I got a zero and stuff like that. Once I put it in my gun safe, or I lean it against the wall, or whatever, uh, it will go off after a certain amount of time, so it saves on battery life. And I really like that feature. But as soon as you grab it up, as soon as it, it's jar, you know, that, that little motion sensor, Jimmy Jam, it's gotten there, uh, it will wake up, come to life on the last setting that you had it on, and you can use it, the usable site. Um, let's see, uh, the other thing is, uh, so I mentioned that it's got a, a, a lower battery life with the circle dot. This model's really neat, and I have it on my, one of my other rifles as well, in that you can go from a, essentially an EOTech reticle, which is that 65 MOA uh, circle with a little dot in the center, um, with the hash marks and all that, to just a dot. Um, I have come to the conclusion for me, that I like just a dot. I tried using the uh, circle dot or the EOTech reticle, if you want to call it that, in a shoot house class that Joe Wire was working, uh, excuse me, was, uh, was teaching. Uh, phenomenal class. You should take that. In fact, we got one coming up in like a week or two, uh, another listener, listener class, and it's, uh, it's a three day class, but uh, I, I just couldn't use the circle dot. It just didn't work for me. But if you like it, it's there and you can use it. And it's, it's funny because this is a Holosun optic using an EOTech reticle, and it's way better than an EOTech reticle. It's super crisp. I mean, it, 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 it's like sharp. The edges are sharp. Um, anybody that's ever looked at it through an EOTech, you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's just like all blurry and yucky. So really like the optic, but we'll do a dedicated video on that. And then let's see, moving back, it's got the excess uh, ghost ring rear sight. Um, and that's it. I mean, other than that, it's, it's factory. Uh, what is the rifle? The, the rifle is a Glenfield Model 30A, and uh, they're made for Glenfield by Marlin. So this is a, a, a Marlin 336, which is essentially the most robust lever action rifle ever built. Uh, there are models uh, that are top ejection. Uh, those just aren't as as strong. I mean, you know, if you're firing 38 to 357s, it doesn't really matter. But for like 3030 and stuff like that, and uh, heavier calibers, I like having a closed receiver. Uh, and the Marlin 336 action does afford you that. Uh, so it's six plus one. And uh, I felt like I was just leaving out something about the Marlin, uh, but that's okay. So anyway, they're made for Glenfield. Uh, this is a, a non-safety model. So in order to essentially safe it, if you had a round in the chamber and whatever, uh, would be to fall to the half cock notch. So you you know chamber around or whatever, and if you wanted to carry it like that, you would slowly, gently f fall to the half cock notch. Okay, so now uh, the uh, hammer is not resting on the firing pin or that little kind of duber that goes like that when you press the trigger. So kind of cool like that. Uh, we'll definitely shoot it and really. I've dealt with a lot of companies for, well, for forever, and um, Overwatch Precision not only makes great Glock triggers, but they have Cerakote services. So uh, I was talking with Jerry Semino, who's the president of Overwatch, really, really nice guy, really down to earth, cool as hell. Uh, we, we love his triggers. We run them on all, all of our Glocks here at Practically Tactical. And uh, I mentioned that I had some projects and they very, very meaningful to me. Would he be interested in, in doing them? He said, yeah, totally. So I sent my, you know, I sent the lever gun, I sent the 1911, the Chuck Taylor uh, 1911, and they immediately, they, upon getting them, I think that the next day they called, uh, which is when they probably unboxed them, you know, and a guy named Johnny from Overwatch called me, I called him back, and so we go over the project of the gun, and what I realized about, I don't know, three quarters of the way through the conversation is that he, he didn't know, this is not supposed to be egotistical, but he didn't know who I was, and I only say that because like he didn't know that we were 
he was, they were a sponsor, that we were you know, anybody but a regular customer. And I gotta tell you, I was so fucking impressed, and I use that word to emphasize the point, uh, with, with the way that he handled and conducted himself in the phone call, because I was a little bit unsure, frankly, whether I was going to go with a certain color. I said, I, I knew I wanted armor black, but for the, for the accents, for the rest of the gun, I was unsure. And you know what he said to me? First of all, totally polite, totally professional. Uh, you know, we were going over things and, 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 you know, he, it was everything, the communication was super clear. And then he said, well, well, what does, like, when you think of the rifle, or when, oh, excuse me, when you think of your mentor, because I was talking about Paul Gomez, he said, what do you think of? And I said, you know what, I gotta stop you right there, Johnny, because that is such an awesome question to ask someone, and that's the kind of shit that, excuse me, that's the kind of stuff I used to ask people when I was working on their guns. You know, like, what does a gun mean to you? Like, I was refinishing uh, a client's uh, Smith & Wesson Model 10, and amongst other things, parkerizing it, and he was trying to figure out other features that he wanted. And it's like, because that, that meant so much to me because it's like the gun, it, it, it's more than a gun for people. And this is actually, this is the, his words. He's like, well, we, we understand that like guns are more than just guns to a lot of people, especially when it's a special project like this. I mean, this is owned by my late mentor uh, and um, it, 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 it has a lot of sentimental value to me. And I just thought that that was such a cool question. Uh, so I just wanna give kudos to Johnny and, and the way that they're conducting themselves over at, over at Overwatch. Uh, because that's the kind of stuff that is oftentimes lacking in this industry. And I could tell that he was passionate about what he's doing, which is also just a, apparently a dying art uh, in many, many different areas of the manufacturing sector. So I went with uh, the Armor Black uh, Cerakote, and then this is their proprietary, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting, is it brown, is it green? I don't know. So uh, because it, it's kind of like, a brownish, greenish proprietary color mix that they do. They've got like all the equipment there, uh, totally legit Cerakote operation, and they, they mix, you know, so they'll mix colors and make custom ones. And it came out really, really, really nice, I may, might add. And then I, I reworked the internals, I totally dehorned it, um, and slicked it up and polished the uh, bolt. The bolt is chromed. And so now, with my, try to get this set up so I don't cross myself. So now, when I've got the two together, uh, they're, they're the same, you know? So this, the, the, the Chuck Taylor Combat Master, which I'll do a separate video on, uh, has a stainless steel thumb safety and a stainless steel barrel bushing. And with this having chromed, uh, and they're all polished too, uh, it's, it's really neat and they kind of match each other uh, beautifully. And again, this is the Armor Tough and the proprietary uh, green-brown that uh, this is gonna fall and then I'll be really upset. So a green-brown that, uh, that Overwatch does. Okay, so that's a lot of talking. Let's go out and shoot it. So now we're uh, out at the 100-yard line. I got this, the uh, Hollow Sun sighted in, and this is the 503GU Elite. And it's really kind of cool. It's, it's, it's one of their newer models, and it's got a green reticle. So it's a circle dot thing, or you can either convert it, uh, use the circle dot, like EOTech reticle configuration, or the dot. I like the dot. Um, and I was talking to my friend at Hollow Sun, and he was telling me that the, uh, the human eye picks up green best um, on the color spectrum. And so everything that I have is red, so I'm not sure how I feel about the green, but I mean, it is kind of refreshing. It's very, very fast. I, I, I can't attest to the, if it's quicker or slower than red, but I mean, regardless, when I put it in front of my eyes, it's right there. Yeah, it's, it's really bright. It's actually almost reminds me of a lot of my handgun sights that are uh, green, you know, the green front sight. So I, I like it. It's Certainly very fast and uh, very crisp dot. I'm happy the clarity of the optic is nice and clear. So let's go ahead and take some rounds. Just gonna take some rounds on, uh, on steel at 100. I'll tell you, man. This is really cool. <laughs> this is just a cool project, a cool rifle. And, you know, going in there, um, just watching any kind of disassembly video or something on YouTube and going in there and just kind of breaking edges. And if you, I mean, obviously, if you have no skill level, don't do that. Um, I, I did, again, that, you know, that apprenticeship with John Robinson for two years uh, of gunsmithing. And so I, I, knew, I knew what I was doing anyway, but it's not too hard as long as you don't try to go too, 
crazy, but just sliding everything, you know, taking the, uh, the lever, taking a very flat surface and just dragging it across some sandpaper, maybe like 600 and then uh, 2000. Uh, you'll smooth everything out. You'll take those, those factory, the, the uh, machining marks and burrs off and oof, it's, it's nice. It's very pleasant to shoot. It, it doesn't thump you. It's just a, a push and the muzzle just goes. So I really like it. Um, I hope that everybody appreciates my sound effects. I've been working 36 years to perfect them. Anyhow, there's the rifle. Um, the, the stream light that I'm going to be putting on is, is in the mail right now. It's one of the thousand lumen models. Um, and I'm going to be putting that on. I'm still trying to figure out what kind of sling I want to put on it because I'm in between something very practical, which would obviously be the, the Magpul MS1 line uh, with that quick slide feature that I have on all my rifles, uh, or just going with a traditional leather sling. I'm not sure which, which way I want to go, but hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, it, for me, it's a, it's a very, um, very uh, sentimental gun and uh, just reminds me of Gomez and many of the conversations that we've had about this type of stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, uh, especially the Alliance PD folks for letting us come out here. We wouldn't be able to do what we do and get you out good information and fun videos like this. And if you have any ammo needs, go to Phoenix Ammo, F-E-N-I-X. They're our ammo sponsor. Their stuff is outstanding. We, I, we know that you'll be really blown away by their quality, and they've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. So until the next one, we'll see you then.